you have a Swift UI list with lots of rows, you might find it's really slow to update when you've sort or filter those rows. Code that should run instantly instead takes one or two seconds. And very long lists might even take one or two minutes. In this video, I'm going to show you the code that causes the problem. Then show you the one line Swift UI fix to solve the problem. And most importantly, I'll explain why it fixes a problem, so you aren't just copying code without really understanding it. Let's go to Xcode. So here I have a view that has one property, which is an array of 600 integers from 1 to 600. Inside the body, there's a VStack with a button that shuffles the list every time it's pressed, and a list that shows all the items. Shuffling the array is how we're simulating you changing the items, because it forces the list to update its rows. If I run that code in the simulator, you'll see the button and list of items. And if I press the button, you'll see nothing happens. At least at first. If you wait a little longer, boom, the list updates. And if I press the button again, the same thing happens. In fact, it happens every time you sort or filter the list. I'm going to press it one last time. But this time, I want you to watch here in Xcode's Debug Navigator. You'll see it maxes out the CPU for the whole time while the items are being shuffled. So it's not like the program is just going to sleep. I'm going to show you exactly why this happens in just a moment. But first, I want to show you the one line fix. Back in Xcode, add this modifier to the list. Not to the items in the list, but to the list itself. Dot .id, uuid. Now if I build and run the code again, you'll see I can press shuffle as often as I'd like, and it updates instantly. If I press it repeatedly really fast, you might see the CPU usage go up, but that's hardly surprising. So that's a problem, and that's how it's fixed. But I don't want you just copying the code into your project and hoping for the best, because that doesn't teach you anything, and you're missing an opportunity to learn more about how Swift UI works. I'm going to comment out our fix, so we're back to the old code again. And then I'll go to the product menu and choose profile. This will launch instruments for our app, which is Xcode's built-in performance analysis tool. There are lots of ways instruments can examine our code, but the best option here is time profiler, because it reports what our code was doing while it was running. Now I'll press record, which will cause the app to launch in simulator while the time profiler is working. So I'll switch to simulator now, and you can see our apps running. Now watch what happens when I press shuffle. Bang. It spikes up to maximum, and just basically stays there for a few seconds while the list is being updated. So the CPU is being maxed out, but that doesn't tell us anything we didn't already know. To see why it's being maxed out, we have to look in the time profiler's inspectors. And in particular, we should be looking for the heaviest stack trace. This is a brilliant feature in instruments that tells us what one piece of code took the most time in our program. So if you want to look for just one piece of code to optimize, this is usually a good place to start. You can see some things are white, and others gray. The white code was our own code, whereas the gray stuff is Apple's framework code. You can see next to each method name is a number telling us how many milliseconds were spent in the method. And you can see that 4,936 milliseconds were spent in platformviewchild.update. Then 4881 milliseconds in list core batch updates or form updates, 4869 milliseconds in compute removes and inserts, until finally here, 4833 milliseconds in collection changes dot form changes. And below that, 2818 milliseconds in collection dot common prefix, and below that, 1433 milliseconds in this protocol witness for collection dot subscript dot read. Between these three methods is a 3.4 second gap, and the work just carries on going down afterwards. So our heaviest stack trace, what one piece of code caused most work, is telling us that collection.form changes is ultimately responsible for 4.8 seconds of work. And over here, in the main time profiler output, you can see the total CPU time across the entire run is only 5.17 seconds. That means calling collection.form changes was the vast majority of our work. Back in our code, you might be able to see what the problem is. Our list shows all 600 strings in the items array, and the array is marked with at state. That's a Swift property wrapper that allows our views value to change. But it also means that when the array does change, the body property will be reinvoked by Swift UI. It'll update the view to reflect those changes. The list itself hasn't changed. 
but the things inside the list, the rows that come from items, have changed because they're now in a new order. So list decides it wants to see how the items have changed. So it goes through its original items and the new items and figures out which items are new, which have been removed and which have just been moved. This is a really neat feature because it allows a list to animate its changes. And it's also why list needs to have that ID parameter. It needs to be able to identify each row uniquely so it can tell when they move. The problem is it's trying to compare 600 items against 600 other items and that's extremely slow. Worse, if we had used 10,000 rows, the code would effectively never finish. It would just take too long. I'm going to reintroduce our fix for this, which is to use the ID modifier with a new UUID. Every time you create a UUID, you get a different string of letters and numbers that are guaranteed to be unique. You can try it yourself in a terminal by calling the command UUIDGen a few times. Remember, SwiftUI reinvokes the body property every time an at state property changes, which means we'll get a new UUID every time the array changes. That new UUID then goes into the ID modifier, which is used to uniquely identify views. We've told SwiftUI that this list has a unique identifier, and that identifier is a new UUID every time. So what happens is that SwiftUI takes a look at the list of 600 items it had before takes a look at the new list of 600 items and decides they're different lists. So it just replaces one with the other. Without the ID, SwiftUI realizes the list is actually the same one and so it doesn't change it. Instead, it goes inside the list and starts comparing all the items to figure out what changed. That's why our one line fix works so well. We're making SwiftUI think the list itself is different so it doesn't try to look inside it to figure out the differences itself. When I show this tip to David Long, he described it with a brilliant UI kit analogy. It's the equivalent of calling reload data on a table view instead of trying to animate the changes. Now there is a downside to using ID like this. You won't get your update animated. Remember, we're effectively telling SwiftUI the old list has gone away and there's a new list now, which means it won't try to move rows around in an animated way. However, if your app freezes for 10 seconds because of SwiftUI calculating all those differences, losing a little animation is a small price to pay. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope even more you learn something new about SwiftUI along the way. You know, I've got a massive free course teaching SwiftUI right here on YouTube. Completely free, taking you from zero to hero across real world practical projects and showing you behind the scenes as well about how SwiftUI really works. If you like this video, go and check that out. I even have a 100 days of SwiftUI course, again free, again on YouTube. Go and look at that as well. And if you like those, subscribe to my channel. I make lots of videos like this one, helping you reach your goals with Swift, with SwiftUI, with UIKit, and much more.